When darkness descended upon the American South in the wake of the Civil War, a sinister spectre emerged from the shadows, the Ku Klux Klan. Founded in 1865 by a group of Confederate veterans, this malevolent fraternity quickly spread its cloak of terror over the former Confederacy, operating under the chilling cover of night and an ideology steeped in bigotry and hate. From mysterious midnight rides to brutal acts of violence, the Klan sought to reimpose white supremacy through intimidation and terror. For over a century and a half, their tactics and rituals have evolved, yet their overarching message of racial hatred and fear has endured, echoing into the modern era. Prominent figures, such as the infamous Grand Wizard Nathan Bedford Forrest, wielded the Klan's influence as a weapon against the newly won rights of African Americans, twisting the path of progress into a painful spiral of violence and retribution. But who were these hooded figures who cloaked their hatred in the garb of patriotism and Christianity? How did they justify their horrifying acts of violence? As we journey into the heart of this darkness, we bear in mind the words of Martin Luther King Jr. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Are you ready to shine a light on the brutal history of the Ku Klux Klan and confront the harsh realities of America's past? Join us as we peel back the Klan's hood, revealing the grim truth beneath. Welcome to the Diary of Julius Caesar. Dusk to Darkness, the emergence of the Ku Klux Klan. As the tumultuous era of the American Civil War came to a close in 1865, the South was in shambles steeped in the aftermath of profound loss, both human and material. It was here, in this setting of devastation and resentment, that six Confederate veterans hailing from Pulaski, Tennessee, conceived an organization that would, unfortunately, leave an indelible mark on the nation's history. This fraternity, initially a harmless social club for Southern veterans to share stories and engage in camaraderie, took on the mysterious name Ku Klux Klan deriving its nomenclature from the Greek word kiklos, meaning circle, and the Scottish Gaelic word clan. In the glow of nighttime bonfires, the clan, as it came to be known, seemed less an organization and more a spectre, adopting ghost-like costumes as a nod to the fallen Confederate soldiers. Their initial intent was to inject fear into the heart of the newly freed African-American population and the Reconstruction government. It was less a structured group, and more a loose collection of local factions sharing common costumes and titles. Yet the story of this birth cannot be told without mention of Nathan Bedford Forrest, a former Confederate general turned Grand Wizard of the Klan. His charisma and leadership skills helped transform the Klan from a disorganized mob into a formidable, albeit ominous, force. Under his watch, the Klan evolved from a social fraternity to a violent, politically motivated organization with a clear purpose, the re-establishment of white supremacy. This transition did not occur without resistance. Forrest's command that members refrain from violence was often ignored, leading to widespread atrocities against African Americans and white Republicans. These acts of terror further consolidated the Klan's reputation as a sinister force, casting a long, dark shadow over the South. One notable anecdote from this period involved an African-American legislator from Louisiana, PBS Pinchback. Despite being subjected to threats from the Klan, Pinchback stood firm, not only surviving his term, but going on to become the first African-American governor of a U.S. state. His tenacity was emblematic of the broader struggle against the Klan's intimidation. As this fearsome organization began to wield its influence, an infamous phrase became associated with their actions the Invisible Empire. This slogan not only bolstered the Klan's terrifying image, but also echoed their aspiration for a nation dominated by their ethos of white supremacy. The Klan also found crafty ways to communicate secretly. For instance, they developed a coded language called Klonversations, full of Ks and often undecipherable to outsiders. This only added to the mystique of the organization while enhancing the fear they generated. In these formative years, the Ku Klux Klan emerged from the embers of the Civil War, initially as a harmless social club, 
only to morph into an organization synonymous with hate and violence. Their legacy, embedded in the nation's psyche, serves as a stark reminder of a time when the flames of hatred were fanned under the guise of brotherhood. Rising tides of terror, the triple waves of the Ku Klux Klan. In the tumultuous river of American history, the Ku Klux Klan's resurgence has ebbed and flowed in three distinctive waves. Each resurgence has been defined by a unique set of characteristics, all underpinned by a relentless pursuit of white supremacy. The Klan's first wave crashed upon the country shortly after the Civil War, as the South grappled with the seismic changes brought on by the abolition of slavery. Embittered Confederate veterans, yearning for a bygone era, sought solace in the Klan, making it a vehicle for their anger and frustration. Through intimidation and violence, they sought to silence the voices of emancipated African Americans and obstruct their journey towards civil rights. This initial wave began to recede with the implementation of the Enforcement Acts of 1870 and 1871, known colloquially as the Ku Klux Klan Acts. Crafted during the tenure of President Ulysses S. Grant, these legislative pieces were aimed at dismantling the Klan and safeguarding African-American rights. The aftermath saw the decline of the Klan, at least for a time. As the echoes of the first wave subsided, the dawn of the 20th century saw the emergence of the second wave. Birthed in the post-WW1 era, this resurgence was rooted in the xenophobic sentiments brewing amidst rapid societal changes. Fueled by the 1915 film, The Birth of a Nation, which glorified the Klan, this wave reached its crest in the 1920s. This film, ironically, was screened in the White House for President Woodrow Wilson, marking a dark chapter in the nation's leadership. A significant figure during this period was William Joseph Simmons, who sought to rejuvenate the Klan. His efforts were a success and the Klan expanded its hateful ideologies beyond African Americans to include Catholics, Jews and immigrants. Boasting a membership of approximately four million at its peak, the Klan became an influential force in the national discourse. However, corruption and scandal from within precipitated its decline by the end of the 1920s. The third wave emerged in response to the burgeoning civil rights movement of the 1960s. The Klan, once again, reared its ugly head to challenge the strides towards equality. It was in this era that the notorious name of Robert Shelton became synonymous with the Klan's activities. As the leader of the United Klans of America, he oversaw a reign of terror against civil rights activists and proponents of racial equality. An unforgettable event during this period was the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963 which took the lives of four innocent girls. This act of terror was masterminded by members of the United Clans of America. The incident sent shockwaves across the country and was a catalyst in the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Sinister Strategies, unveiling the dark designs of the Ku Klux Klan. In the shadowy pages of America's past, the Ku Klux Klan stands as a sinister character its legacy intertwined with horrific acts of violence and intimidation in pursuit of white supremacy. Throughout its existence, the Klan has demonstrated a chillingly consistent commitment to its goals, employing a repertoire of methods as diverse as they were destructive. In the aftermath of the Civil War, the Klan's first aspiration was the restoration of white dominance in Southern society. This objective was not confined to social dynamics, but extended to political and economic spheres. The Klan's reign of terror was targeted mainly against African Americans and white Republicans who supported Reconstruction. Their actions were ruthless and relentless, from nighttime raids on innocent families to violent assaults against community leaders. Among the Klan's numerous targets, one name stands out for his courage and resilience, Congressman Robert B. Elliott. An African American representative from South Carolina, Elliott became a vocal critic of the Klan in the early 1870s. Despite enduring numerous threats and assassination attempts, he remained steadfast in his pursuit of justice. The Klan's methods were characterized by their unique blend of secrecy and spectacle. While their identities were cloaked in ghostly white robes and masked hoods, their acts were deliberately public and dramatic. 
the infamous night rides and cross burnings were designed not just to punish, but to terrorize and deter any potential defiance. As the clan expanded its horizons during the second wave, their definition of others broadened to include immigrants, Catholics, and Jews. The return of the clan in the early 20th century saw a renewed emphasis on nativism. The clan presented itself as the defender of true American values, safeguarding the nation from the perceived threats of immigration and changing social norms. It was during this period that Hiram Wesley Evans, an influential clan leader, proclaimed, We are a white man's organization, exalting the Caucasian race and teaching the doctrine of white supremacy. This wave of the Klan was also notorious for its attempts to exert influence in political arenas. It was not uncommon for Klan-endorsed candidates to achieve significant electoral successes in the 1920s, particularly in states like Indiana and Colorado. The organization's influence even extended to school boards and civic organizations, where they propagated their narrow definition of Americanism. The Klan's third resurgence amid the civil rights movement demonstrated a ruthless opposition to racial equality. Here, the Klan exerted a shocking degree of brutality against those advocating for civil rights, as seen in the tragic 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in 1963. Yet, this wave also revealed the Klan's dwindling influence, as their actions were increasingly met with public outrage and legal repercussions. Inscribed in shadows, decoding the enigmatic symbols and rituals of the Ku Klux Klan. Throughout its infamous history, the Ku Klux Klan has cloaked itself not only in robes of white, but also in layers of mysterious rituals and symbols. These facets, often as chilling as they are cryptic, serve as both the armor and the weapon of the Klan, providing a sense of unity and purpose to its members while instilling terror in their victims. The Klan's distinctive attire, flowing robes, pointed hoods, and ominous masks has become an emblem of fear and intimidation. The white of the robes symbolizes racial purity, a distorted concept central to the clan's ideology. In contrast, the masks and hoods serve a more pragmatic purpose, concealing identities and shielding members from the consequences of their heinous actions. The burning cross, perhaps the most potent of the clan's symbols, paints a grotesque silhouette against the night sky. This act, meant to evoke both fear and reverence, traces its roots back to the second wave of the Klan in the early 20th century. Inspired by D.W. Griffith's 1915 film The Birth of a Nation, which erroneously portrayed cross-burning as an old Scottish rite, the Klan adopted this symbol to inject their actions with a sense of historic and religious legitimacy. Another critical aspect of the Klan's symbology is its unique lexicon. The organization employs a series of code words and titles, often borrowing from Greek and Latin or utilizing a modified form of standard English. This coded language, known as clan speak, includes titles such as Imperial Wizard for the national leader and Clavin for the local chapter. These titles and terminologies help forge a shared identity among members while maintaining an air of mystery for outsiders. Indeed, the clan's rituals and symbols are not merely theatrics, but key tools in the psychological warfare they wage. As former clan leader David Duke once remarked, the fiery cross symbolized a sense of fraternity, a sense of mutual loyalty and commitment in the fiery trials of life. This remark offers a chilling insight into the clan's mindset, revealing how they twist symbols of unity and commitment into instruments of fear and oppression. One of the more curious practices in the clan's playbook was the initiation ritual, known as the naturalization ceremony. New members, termed aliens before initiation, would swear an oath to uphold the principles of the clan, renounce any allegiance to other groups deemed incompatible with the clan's values, and promise to always recognize the supremacy of the white race. These ceremonies were often carried out in remote locations under the cover of darkness adding an element of drama and danger. Under the hood, the unseen reach of the Ku Klux Klan into American politics. The influence of the Ku Klux Klan has not been confined to the shadows of secluded woods or the flickering glow of burning crosses. It has permeated the halls of power, 
reaching into the very heart of American politics. In the 1920s, a time often termed the Klan's Golden Age, the insidious reach of the Klan was at its zenith, influencing local, state, and even national politics. As the decade dawned, the Klan rode a wave of popular sentiment, bolstered by a potent mix of nativism, Protestantism, and white supremacy. The Klan's message resonated with a substantial portion of the American populace, especially in the Midwest and South. This public support gave the Klan an immense influence that they would leverage to infiltrate the political system. Local politics was the first to feel the Klan's grip. Klan-backed candidates swept to power in towns and cities across the country. One prominent example is the city of Indianapolis, where in 1924, almost every elected official was either a Klansman or backed by the Klan. The Klan had a hand in shaping policies, ranging from law enforcement to education, enforcing their narrow view of Americanism. On the state level, the Klan enjoyed significant successes. Nowhere was this more evident than in the state of Indiana. Edward L. Jackson, an ally of the notorious Klan leader D.C. Stevenson, won the governorship in 1924. Jackson's tenure, marked by corruption and scandal, was a stark reminder of the dangers posed by the Klan's political influence. Even on the national stage, the Klan managed to exert influence. Perhaps the most significant indication of this influence was the 1924 Democratic National Convention, notoriously known as the Klanbake. While the Klan failed to secure the nomination for its preferred candidate, William Gibbs McAdoo, the event was marked by bitter division over the Klan's role in the Democratic Party highlighting the Klan's power to shape national discourse. The Klan's infiltration into politics wasn't just about gaining power. It was about legitimizing their hateful ideology. By installing their members in offices of power, the Klan sought to cloak their extremist views in the respectability of public office. As D.C. Stevenson, the Grand Dragon of the Klan in Indiana, once declared, I am the law in Indiana. However, this period of political dominance was short-lived. By the end of the 1920s, the Klan's influence began to wane. Public scandals, including the conviction of Stevenson for the abduction and assault of a young woman, eroded the Klan's support. Increasing opposition from civic and religious groups also contributed to the decline of the Klan's political power. Masked infamy, key figures behind the Ku Klux Klan's hooded history, Hidden behind robes and masks, the leaders of the Ku Klux Klan have cast long, sinister shadows over American history. Two such figures, Nathan Bedford Forrest and David Duke, provide chilling insights into the twisted ideology and cruel methods that have marked the Klan's existence. Nathan Bedford Forrest, a name synonymous with the early history of the Ku Klux Klan, was a figure straight from the ravaged landscape of the post-Civil War South. A Confederate cavalry general famed for his ruthless tactics, Forrest found in the Klan a platform for his bitterness and racial animosity. In the early days of the Klan, around 1867, he emerged as its first Grand Wizard, an ominous title befitting the group's clandestine and ritualistic nature. Under Forrest's leadership, the Klan became a terrifying instrument of white supremacist terror perpetrating acts of violence against African Americans and their white allies across the South. Although Forrest later disassociated himself from the Klan and denied his involvement, his initial role left an indelible stain on his legacy. Fast forward to the 1970s, and another notorious figure emerged on the Klan's stage, David Duke. As different from Forrest in background as they were similar in ideology, Duke was an articulate, media-savvy figure who sought to give the Klan a veneer of respectability. In 1974, he founded the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, an organization that portrayed itself as a Klan for the modern era. With his suits and carefully chosen words, Duke attempted to distance his organization from the Klan's violent past. However, beneath this polished exterior, the same old hatred festered. Duke, like Forrest before him, held the title of Grand Wizard. But unlike Forrest, Duke used his Klan platform as a stepping stone to mainstream politics. In the 1980s, he even won a seat in the Louisiana state legislature. 
What's particularly noteworthy about Duke is his attempt to rebrand the clan and its message for broader appeal. Under Duke, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan purported to be a civil rights organization for white Americans, a misleading label that belied the group's continued commitment to white supremacy. Despite their differences in time, place, and strategy, both Forrest and Duke illustrate the dangerous allure of charismatic leaders for extremist movements. Forrest, the disgruntled general, gave the clan a militant edge and imbued it with his own bitterness and rage. Duke, on the other hand, provided the clan a savvy, politically-minded figure who strove to manipulate public perception for the clan's benefit. Triumph of the Will – The Fight Against the KKK's Reign of Terror In the shadow of the hooded figures, a resistant force arose, undeterred by the ominous flames of the clan's burning crosses. Through the bravery of individuals, the power of organized movements and the weight of law itself, America confronted the Ku Klux Klan's terror with determined resistance. Our journey through this relentless pursuit of justice begins with the legendary figure of Ida B. Wells. A pioneering African-American journalist, she wielded the power of the written word against the Klan in the late 19th century. Her groundbreaking reporting on the horrors of lynching not only exposed the KKK's brutal tactics, but also rallied public opinion against them. Her bravery in standing up to the Klan, despite threats against her life, is emblematic of the courage displayed by countless individuals. Fast forward to the mid-20th century, and the civil rights movement stood tall as a bastion against the Klan's hate-filled ideology. Among the numerous luminaries of this era, the name Martin Luther King Jr. shines particularly bright. His peaceful protests and inspiring speeches were instrumental in challenging the KKKK's efforts to thwart racial equality. His words, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that, stand as a testament to his unwavering commitment to nonviolence. Simultaneously, the Freedom Riders, a courageous group of interracial activists, ventured into the South to challenge segregation, the social manifestation of the Klan's ideology. Their brave actions sparked nationwide attention making them a key force of resistance against the Klan's attempts to preserve racial division. On the legislative front, the federal government began to counter the Klan's influence in the late 19th century with the Enforcement Acts. These laws were designed to protect African Americans' rights and dismantle the Klan's power. However, it was the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that dealt a significant blow to the Klan's operations. These landmark pieces of legislation were a result of years of tireless activism and reflected a shift in the nation's political will towards equality. Yet in the face of legislative changes and social resistance, the Klan persisted. This led to the rise of organizations like the Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC, which used legal tactics to battle the Klan. The SPLC's successful lawsuits against Klan organizations led to hefty fines, effectively bankrupting them and crippling their operations. Echoes of Justice, the Legal Reckoning of the Klan In the labyrinth of American justice, a battle ensued against the Ku Klux Klan, a force cloaked in white robes and shrouded in hate. This struggle was etched into the records of history through trials, punishments and legal battles that slowly but surely began to crumble the Klan's foundation. The first significant crackdown on the Klan took place during the Reconstruction era following the Civil War. In 1871, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Ku Klux Klan Act into law, arming the federal government with the power to squash the Klan's growing influence. The act resulted in the indictment of hundreds of Klan members across the southern states. However, the most monumental moment in the legal battle against the Klan came with the Supreme Court case, United States v. the Ku Klux Klan Act. The landmark 1882 ruling questioned the constitutionality of the Ku Klux Klan Act. While the court held that the federal government could not regulate private actions, it allowed for the law to remain in effect as a weapon against state officials who were in league with the Klan. The paradox of this ruling reflected the complex struggle 
to balance federal powers and individual rights, a historical puzzle that continues to perplex us. Progress seemed slow, and often the scales of justice seemed to tip in favor of the Klan. The case of Sam Bowers, a Klan leader, is a stark example. Accused of ordering the murder of civil rights activist Vernon Dahmer in 1966, Bowers evaded justice for more than three decades thanks to multiple mistrials. However, the dogged pursuit of justice prevailed, and in 1998, Bowers was finally convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment, proving that even the most elusive could not escape the long arm of the law. The Southern Poverty Law Center played a pivotal role in the Klan's legal downfall in the late 20th century. In a landmark case in 1987, the SPLC sued the United Clans of America on behalf of Beulah May Donald, whose son was lynched by Klan members. The lawsuit ended in a $7 million judgment against the Klan, leading to its bankruptcy. This case marked a turning point, setting a precedent for using crushing financial penalties to combat hate groups. One can't discuss the Klan's legal battles without mentioning the courageous prosecutors who sought justice. Bill Baxley, the Attorney General of Alabama, deserves special mention. In the 1970s, he reopened the infamous 16th Street Baptist Church bombing case, which led to the conviction of Klan member Robert Chambliss, bringing some solace to a nation still healing from one of the darkest days of the civil rights era. Unraveling Shadows, the descent of the Klan from mainstream to margins. At its zenith, the Ku Klux Klan was a monstrous presence in America's social and political fabric. From its formation in 1865 until its decline in the late 20th century, the Klan embodied a virulent strain of hatred. But like all entities built on untenable foundations, it too began a downward spiral towards becoming a fringe group. Understanding the decline of the Klan requires peeling back the layers of various socio-political forces. A key trigger was the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s. Activists such as Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and countless unsung heroes faced the Klan's reign of terror with unparalleled courage, marking the dawn of a social renaissance. Their tireless efforts challenged the Klan's narrative, shifting public perception and heralding legislative victories such as the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. While the civil rights activists were sowing the seeds of change, media outlets were simultaneously dismantling the Klan's image. Stetson Kennedy's daring infiltration of the Klan in the 1940s resulted in a series of expose articles and radio programs that ridiculed the Klan's rituals and revealed its violent acts. This mockery diminished the Klan's mystique, turning them from a feared entity into a laughingstock. The media's portrayal of the Klan's actions exposed its brutality, swaying public sentiment against it. Moreover, legal actions and financial penalties also played a decisive role. The Southern Poverty Law Center's victory against the United Klans of America in 1987 marked a significant milestone, virtually bankrupting the Klan and setting a precedent for future suits. This judicious application of economic pressure proved to be a successful weapon against such hate groups. The Klan also faced internal fissures, leadership squabbles, scandals involving prominent members, and a lack of centralized organization led to the fragmentation of the Klan. A telling example is the downfall of David Duke, a former Klan Grand Wizard. Duke attempted to sanitize the Klan's image in the 1970s, but his own credibility crumbled when he was convicted for fraud in 2002. In the 21st century, the Klan has been relegated to the periphery of society. Its membership has dwindled to a small number, scattered across various disjointed factions. Though still active, it's a far cry from its former omnipresence. Today, it's widely disavowed by mainstream society, a repudiation underlined by a 2016 statement from the Republican National Committee which described the Klan's beliefs as repulsive and racist. Through the lens, the Klan's kaleidoscopic portrayal in media and popular culture, 
The influence of media and popular culture in shaping public perception is immense. The portrayal of the Ku Klux Klan, a notorious symbol of racial hatred in these spheres has varied over time, reflecting societal attitudes and sparking conversations about race, violence and history. The saga of Klan's cinematic portrayal begins with the controversial 1915 film The Birth of a Nation. Directed by D.W. Griffith, the silent epic painted the Klan as heroes, depicting a distorted narrative that played on racial fears. Widely seen as a masterpiece of filmmaking, the film unfortunately led to a resurgence of the Klan and ignited a wave of racial violence. Contrasting sharply with this early portrayal, the 1939 film Gone with the Wind displayed the Klan in a subtler light. Although the film doesn't explicitly mention the Klan, it hints at the organization through its depictions of night riders who violently enforce social order. This indirect approach reflects the era's discomfort with overt portrayals of the Klan while still not fully disavowing the mythology surrounding it. In the late 20th century, as social norms shifted, so did the depictions of the Klan. The 1988 film, Mississippi Burning, focuses on the FBI's investigation into the disappearance of civil rights workers, displaying the Klan's brutality and its infiltration into local communities. A similar narrative is presented in the 1996 film, A Time to Kill, which deals with racial tensions, Klan violence, and the struggle for justice. Fast forward to the 21st century, and the evolution in portrayals continues. Spike Lee's 2018 film, Black Klansman, provides a satirical yet sobering look at the Klan. It tells the true story of African-American detective Ron Stallworth, who successfully infiltrated the Klan in the 1970s. This film utilizes humor to expose the Klan's bigotry, while also illustrating the dangerous implications of its ideology. Television and literature have also played their part in casting the Klan into the spotlight, the acclaimed HBO series Watchmen 2019 integrates the historical Tulsa Race Massacre into its storyline with the Klan's stand-in, the 7th Cavalry, as central antagonists. Meanwhile, in literature, Harper Lee's classic To Kill a Mockingbird indirectly portrays the Klan's influence on Southern society. Perhaps the most impactful aspect of these portrayals is their capacity to inspire dialogues about racial intolerance and the dark chapters of American history. As the celebrated African-American novelist James Baldwin once said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Echoes of hatred, parallels and divergences among the KKK and its sinister siblings. The shadowy labyrinth of hate groups is wide and winding, encompassing numerous entities that disseminate messages of intolerance and enact violence. Within this grim expanse, the Ku Klux Klan's infamy stands apart. Its ideologies, tactics and impacts bear both uncanny similarities and stark differences when compared with other white supremacist and extremist groups. Ideologically, the American Nazi Party and the KKK share an abhorrent belief in white racial supremacy. Founded in 1959 by George Lincoln Rockwell, the American Nazi Party brandished symbols and rhetoric reminiscent of Hitler's Germany. Both entities spew venomous anti-Semitic narratives, with the KKK broadening its vitriol to also target African Americans, immigrants, and other minority groups. Curiously, Rockwell surprisingly found allies in the Nation of Islam, a black nationalist group. This alliance, fueled by shared anti-Semitic beliefs, represents an intriguing intersection of hatred that defies conventional wisdom. In terms of tactics, both the KKK and the white supremacist group, Aryan Nations, championed acts of intimidation and terror to impose their will. However, their approaches diverged significantly. Where the Klan's infamous white robes and burning crosses served as symbols of terror, the Aryan Nations, founded by Richard Gernt Butler in the 1970s, embraced paramilitary training and tactics, aspiring to initiate a race war and establish a white homeland. The impact of the KK and other hate groups is also a study in contrast. Few can match the long, turbulent history of the Klan, a group that boasts a dark legacy spanning over a century. However, the lesser-known order, 
an offshoot of the Aryan nations, holds a dubious claim to fame. In the 1980s, under the leadership of Robert J. Matthews, the Order embarked on a campaign of robberies and bombings and was responsible for the assassination of Jewish radio host Alan Berg. The shocking brutality of these acts marked a bloody chapter in the history of white supremacist extremism. Stormfront, a white nationalist, white supremacist and neo-Nazi internet forum, represents a significant departure from the traditional hate group mold. Founded in 1996 by former clan leader Don Black, Stormfront has no physical presence or ceremonial rituals like the KKK. However, its digital reach is extensive, facilitating the spread of hate speech, bigotry, and the coordination of offline activities, demonstrating how these groups have adapted to the digital age. As former Klansman and eventual civil rights activist Elwin Wilson remorsefully stated, I was so full of hate that I blinded myself. His words provide a stark reminder that, regardless of their differences, these groups' ideologies and actions are rooted in a blindness born of hate, a theme that disturbingly connects them across the decades. Ripples of a Dark Legacy – The KKK's Shadow Over America and Beyond As a stone cast into a placid lake disrupts the calm and sends ripples across the water's surface, so too has the Ku Klux Klan disrupted the tranquility of American society and culture, sending far-reaching ripples through time and space that have touched corners of the globe. The KKK's influence on racial relations in America is profound and enduring. In the Jim Crow South, the Klan's reign of terror has left indelible marks. Posters of 1920s Klan rallies with burning crosses and white robes remain emblematic of a deeply ingrained racial divide. This legacy of fear and division can be traced through the civil rights movement of the 1960s to the beating of Rodney King in 1991 and even the Black Lives Matter movement of the 21st century. In the realm of politics, the Klan's influence is less overt, but no less substantial. The white citizens' councils of the 1950s and 60s, known as the Uptown Klan, included politicians and business leaders who perpetuated segregationist policies. Their influence can be seen in present-day dog-whistle politics, where coded language is used to appeal to prejudices. As civil rights activist Fannie Lou Hamer observed, nobody's free until everybody's free, encapsulating the struggle to break free from the Klan's insidious political legacy. Beyond the confines of America, the Klan's presence resonates. The global community watched in horror as images of Klan rallies and lynchings were broadcast. Countries like the United Kingdom and Germany denounced the KKK's actions, their press often drawing parallels between the Klan and the fascist movements gaining ground in 1930s Europe. In South Africa, however, Elements of the apartheid regime found common cause with the Klan's ideologies, a chilling reminder that the tendrils of racial hatred can stretch across continents. The KKK is not unique. It forms part of a larger global phenomenon of racially motivated hate groups, including Germany's neo-Nazi groups, Britain's National Front, and Australia's True Blue Crew. These groups share an alarming propensity for racial superiority, exclusionary practices, and often violence. Each is, in its own way, a reflection of the clan's ethos, refracted through the prism of their own national contexts. As the curtains fall on our deep dive into the history of the Ku Klux Klan, we are left with an uneasy mosaic of faces and events etched into the canvas of time. From its post-Civil War inception, through the shockwaves of its fiery resurgence, and onto its disquieting shadow in the modern era, the Klan's influence on America and the world is undeniable and unsettling. The white robes of Nathan Bedford Forrest, the incendiary rhetoric of David Duke, the defiant stand of brave individuals like Ida B. Wells and Martin Luther King Jr. They all dance together in the flickering flames of the Klan's burning crosses, painting a rich, albeit somber, tapestry of our shared past. Yet, through the murkiness, Glimmers of hope and strength illuminate our way forward. The resistance faced by the Klan, the bravery of those who stood up against it, and the legal battles that challenged its frightful authority, they form the building blocks of a better, more inclusive future. In the words of celebrated American novelist William Faulkner, 
The past is never dead, it's not even past. Let this sentiment guide our understanding of the clan's history and inspire our continued vigilance against the persisting forms of intolerance. For history, in its relentless march, echoes the lessons of the past into our present, urging us never to forget and ceaselessly reminding us of the unyielding power of unity, justice and empathy. After all, as the echoes of the past reverberate into our present, they serve as a beacon for our journey into a future where the hateful doctrine of the clan finds no quarter.